Ooh. <clears throat> Ooh, this light. The light off the screen. In the early morning. Or in the morning. It's not really that early. But yesterday I was uh, speaking briefly about how we hold on to this last sliver. And I used my little fingers here, you know, because they're dirt. But how we hold on to this last little sliver where we make choices, where we decide, where we offer, where we do, where we uh, hold our being as ourself, where we know ourself, where we think we know ourselves. <laughs> Praise God. We, how reluctant we are. We can't let go of that because we don't know what comes after that. If I let go of myself, what will be? If I let go of my choice, my approval, my judgments, my everything, perceptions, discernments, observations. If I let go of that place, what happens? Where will I be? Where will I appear? Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my Jesus is working constantly um, to get us past that place by assuring us that we are his. We are among those that are called to salvation, to be his, that it's okay, <laughs> that can be let go of. This thing that needs to know it's, it's doing it. And so I was reminded this morning of this very particular place, <laughs> Jesus takes us, praise God. Has he taken you there? He's taken some there, I know that. Um, how much I'm there, God knows. But I see it, can't deny it. I hear it. It does something when I hear it. So the thing I'm talking about is where Jesus says, therefore be ye also ready. For at such an hour that you think not, Another place he says, when you do not expect, the Son of Man comes. So you be ready for what you don't expect. Now, unless that does something in your hearing, does something in your gourd, does something in your heart, There's waiting. There's patience. How can a man make himself ready for what he doesn't expect? What is he expecting? Is he expecting trouble? <laughs> Should he arm himself? Is he expecting a visitor? Should he open the door, set the table for what he doesn't expect? Now, Jesus does say the Son of Man is going to come like a thief in the night. And if the goodman of the house knew what, what hour the thief was coming, he would have prepared himself. So there's a surrender there, or not. I don't know. I don't know. I have to be persuaded. Something has to work upon me. I can't, I can no longer occupy this place where I'm going to make myself ready for what I don't expect. Because if I don't expect it, what am I making, my, how can I make myself ready? What shall be? So Jesus deals very adequately with that last little sliver. Therefore be ye also ready, for at such an hour that you think not. You think not specifically. Not only that you don't even think of it, it's when you think not, when you think it's not going to happen, you can be sure that's when it's going to happen. <laughs> Praise God. So what, what's there? What's there beyond this place, this little slice, sliver of dirt that we occupy to, to defend, to hold to? Well, what's always been there? <laughs> the Word of God to do what the Word of God does. That's it. Jesus, the Word of God to man. That's all it can be relied on. Man thinks he has to approve, understand, uh, make himself ready. 
No, it doesn't say get ready. It says be, be ye therefore ready. Well, how can you do that unless something has more power to get you off of that little piece where you choose and decide? Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. So you say, we have to be convinced this really is to salvation. You know, this is the work of God, Jesus said, that you believe upon him whom he has sent. We think it's all these other things. This is the work of God to preach the gospel. This is a work of God to do this or that. This is the work of God to whatever. All these things that we think uh, we have some charge over rather than believe this is the work of God that you believe upon him whom he has sent. And oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful how the Lord is so faithfully patient, faithfully patient in all of it, to each one of his, that it's okay that we are those who don't know what we do, because that's where mercy exists. <laughs> that's where mercy is for, for the one who doesn't know what he's doing. And how we try to be the one who knows exactly what we're doing. Exactly. The significance of everything we do and say. The importance of everything we do and say. Like we can upend God's plan if we don't uh, approve of it rightly. Administer it rightly. Oh, you want, you talk about a weight. You talk about a weight. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not unusual for the disciples to sometimes think, Man, I sure wish it would be I sure wish we'd go back to just offering pigeons and goats and lambs and that was just a lot easier than this thing. <laughs> well, it's designed that way. We can't bear the weight of salvation on ourselves. We weren't made to. We're made to be saved. And Jesus alone is glorified in that as the Savior, the salvation that is of God. But oh how we look till we God just totally allows us to become exhausted, rebuked many times, chastened many times, turned back many times from all our plans, all our views of how, how this works, other than God's calling and choosing alone by his sovereign grace. Uh, but I understand I understand everything that has to work will work. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken till only what is unshakable remains. Everything that has to work will work until only the one who alone does the work remains and is seen and is glorified. So bless you today. Continue in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to his words. <laughs> Be ready for what you don't expect or, and can't. And even think at the precise moment of its not being, it is. Behold, he says, I come quickly. Behold. This is the word of God through Christ to us. He's telling us to see, I come quickly. And all of this that wants to make uh, something as either a far-off event or something as uh, not now, not today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as they did in the day of provocation. Yeah, we discover, oh, God's plan is perfect, man. God's plan, we wear ourselves out against that rock. <laughs> We wear ourselves out against that rock. And it's good and it's right and it's appointed that he alone be glorified. The chief cornerstone. Yeah. Bless you, brothers and sisters. There is room at the altar. There is room at the pew. There is room at the table. A place for me. It's not about being someone else There's healing and being true There is room at the cross for you Tell me, do you care?
Yes, to obey Him. Hi. From 2016 to 2022, I've never asked for contributions and none of my platforms are monetized. I'm generally more favorable to giving to widows and orphans than to giving to preachers. The Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Jesus cares about the girls in these homes. I just completed Christian leadership training with Dr. Mark Rutland, who founded Global Servants. I've reviewed their financials, and I am impressed both with their accountability and the large proportion of contributions directly supporting their girls in Ghana and Thailand. Please visit their website, globalservants.org, and pray about giving to these girls through them. Tell me, do you care to obey Him?